Hi, I'm Michelle Shelfont, psychotherapist, holistic life coach, and human, just like you, learning to navigate life's challenges. With over 25 years experience, I teach people how to get healthy using the adult chair model. The adult chair model is where simple psychology meets grounded spirituality, and it teaches us how to become healthy adults. From anxiety and depression to codependency and relationship issues, you can use the adult chair for just about anything. Each week, I share practical tips, tools, and advice from myself and a wide range of experts on how to get unstuck, how to live authentically, and how to truly love yourself, all while sitting in your adult chair. Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast. I am Michelle Shalfant. Happy to be here with you today. And... Mr. Mike Foster, <laughs> I'm so excited for you guys to hear the show today. Mike Foster has developed a system based on research called the seven primal questions. Let me just tell you, since figuring out what my primal question is, we all have one of the seven as our dominant. Let me give you an example. One of the seven is, am I loved? Okay. Okay. Am I safe is another one. So when you figure out what your primal question is, what you will find is that's how you show up in the world with that question dominant within you. You will learn to relate differently to other humans. And of course, I had everyone in my whole family, my whole team, all my friends, everybody's taking this thing. So I know now how they respond to me is based on their primal questions. We're going to get into it in the show. It is so cool. Because by the way, life is about relationships, right? So when we can understand what someone's primal question is, it's a game changer. Speaking of relationships, I want you to know I've created something for you. It's absolutely free. It's on relationships. What I found was many people were writing in about if their relationship was healthy or not. So I created a free PDF for you. It's called five release, or excuse me, five healthy relationship myths. Because what I found was many people were writing in, I'm like, that isn't healthy. And this is, and here's why. So it's five healthy relationship myths plus tips on how to improve your relationship. It's a PDF hundred percent free. You can download it at theadultchair.com forward slash myths. That's M Y T H S theadultchair.com forward slash myths. Okay. Let's get back to Mike Foster. So this is what we talked about today. We talked about the seven primal questions and what they are, what they mean for your life and the people in your life that you are in relationships with. And I don't mean just romantic, all relationships, how you interact with other humans. When you know what their primal question is and what yours is, you will relate differently to them. Also, we talked about how to replace your primal question with a primal truth. What the flip side is of your primal question, we found out that's actually your superpower and how you can stop letting your child self run your life and live from your healthy adult self. Very adult chair, you guys, let me just tell you. Very adult chair. Lastly, we talked about how to apply your primal question in business and in all of your relationships. This was such a fun podcast. I can't even tell you, cannot wait for you guys to hear. So let me tell you a little bit about Mike Foster and who he is. Mike Foster is known as the Mr. Rogers of personal development. He is the best-selling author, speaker, and executive coach, empowering people to build strong lives by turning their setbacks into superpowers. His work has been featured on Good Morning America, Fox News, and the New York Times. He lives in San Diego with his wife, Jennifer, and their fluffy dog. So here we go with Mr. Mike Foster. So welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast, Mike Foster. Hi, Michelle. Good to be here with you. I know. I'm so happy that you're joining us. Um, I was sharing with you, I had listened to your show on the Donald Miller Podcast, and I was like, oh, we are getting him on. (laughs) (laughs) I know you did two episodes with him. I'm like, I absolutely love this book, 
the seven primal questions. I think it's fascinating and everybody needs to get this book and take that questionnaire, that survey on your website. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. really it drives your whole life. So let's talk about first, I let's talk about a little bit, just who you are and how this book came to fruition. Like how, where did all this, how did all this happen? Cause it's such a good yeah. book. Well, I, I spend kind of my Monday through Fridays uh, with clients uh, all the way from business executives to entrepreneurs to Navy SEALs, all kinds of folks. And kind of my goal is always just to help people get clear on kind of the main drivers of their life and um, understand what roadblocks might be there. And kind of through the course of that work, uh, about four years ago, I started developing just an idea called the primal question. And it, it's really an opportunity for us to like take a very, some very simple language, a very simple like question mm -hmm. and see how it impacts and drives our relationships, relationship with our emotions, our relationship with our dreams and our future. Mm -hmm. And, uh, really begin to see how it impacts our lives. And so four years of research, over 6,000 hours of one-on-one -on -one interviews. I did 22 group labs around this, all distilled into this little but very potent concept called the primal question. Oh, I love that. I love it. So why would someone listening, why would you suggest that they take this quiz or, or understand, um, what do you call it? when you, what's the, what their primal need? Is that what you call it? The seven, seven yeah. primal needs? So, so basically why, why you should take it is because fundamentally the, the results of that questionnaire, that, that assessment mm -hmm. will help you understand the command center of your life. Mm. To me, what I have discovered not only with clients, but also in my own life is that this is the reason why I do almost everything that I do or why the way I see the world the way I see it, why I do my relationships the way I do it, all the way down to very little things about myself. Like I understand why I have no interest in jumping out of airplanes, or I understand <laughs> why I parent the way I parent or do my marriage the way I do my marriage. It all is connected to my primal question. Interesting. Okay. So, and I love, this is why I wanted to have you on too, because the work that I do with people is all about helping us to understand on a deeper level, really who we are, what drives us, what triggers us. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I talk a lot about triggers and I know that you do too with, with your work here. So why don't we jump into what are the seven primal questions? Yeah. So, so here's the kind of the concept in a, in a nutshell, really kind of simple way. Yeah. So in our early childhood, we get imprinted with a primal question and basically mm -hmm. in simple terms, it was a question that went unanswered by our caretakers or by our parents. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also a question that could be uh, imprinted on us through trauma. Uh, but we then carry this question that got imprinted on us in our childhood into our adult lives. And we, we constantly ask it to our friends, family, society, strangers. It doesn't matter. Subconsciously, of course, we're not, we're not like literally asking this question, but we are asking the question. And when it gets answered with a yes, when our primal question is answered with a yes, we feel good. We feel grounded. Our best selves come to the table. Mm -hmm. But when it gets answered with a no or a maybe, to our to our answer to our primal question, we go into what I call the scramble. And I talk about this in the book. And this is all the unhelpful or unhealthy things that we do mm. to try to force the answer back to a yes. So it could be uh, people pleasing. It could be codependent behavior. It could be overgiving. It could be workaholicism. It could be uh, hypervigilance. It, all the unhealthy activities of our lives and all of that activity is what is what I call the scramble. And that's just our attempt to get our primal question answered back with a yes when we receive a no or a maybe. Mm. So seven questions, I'll give you the seven questions really mm -hmm. quickly and then maybe we can dive more deeply yeah. into them. But, and everybody has one, like one dominant question. Now all of us will have parts of all seven. Mm -hmm. 
because mm -hmm. really the, the primal question just represents our highest, our, our apex emotional need that we have as human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, so here are the seven. Uh, question number one, am I safe? Mm -hmm. This has to do with, am I protected? Uh, will I survive? These This question tends to get imprinted when we have trauma, neglect, abuse, addiction in the home that we grew up in. And so we just never felt safe. And so now we carry this question of safety into our adult lives. And when it's answered with a yes, am I safe? We feel good. But when it's answered with a no or a maybe, mm. then we go into the scramble. Okay. And, and we do all the unhealthy things that we do to try to get it back to a yes. Uh, question two, am I secure? This has to do with financial resources. Do I have enough financial resources, money to feel protected? Okay. Now this is different than am I safe? Because am I safe is really about survival. It's like, it's, it, am I going to die? Am I going to live? Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. it's a very survivalist sort of mindset where security is really about, am I resourced appropriately to be able to protect myself and sustain myself? So a little bit I'm, different I'm, intensity on this. Yeah. I want to, I want to clarify that. So when you say, am I safe? Is it physical, mental, emotional, spiritual kind of thing? Safe? Okay. Got it. And yes. then secure is more financial. Okay. Got it. Perfect. Yeah. And, and again, they're, they're going to, um, one of the things I talk about in the book is this whole idea of like the question next to your primal question is also going to be very relevant to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're ordered in a way that um, the question next to your primal question is something that you're going to need to be aware of as another um, need, emotional need that you have. So mm -hmm. safety, security. Mm -hmm. Question three is, am I loved? This is about mm -hmm. the need to feel seen, valued, and heard. Mm -hmm. My wife's primal question is, am I loved? And she grew up in a home where uh, fourth child, parents were kind of done parenting, Mom, mom never mm -hmm. really listened to my wife. So she never felt seen or heard. And, and her interpretation of all the things that she was experiencing in her home was that she wondered and was confused about whether she was loved or not. Mm. So um, again, we have to be very clear that this isn't like an opportunity to blame our parents or to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, talk about kind of our, our childhood being horrible childhood, it's just something got missed, okay? Yeah. Something got interpreted as a child, which what children do, we perceive the world that we're in, yeah. and then we make conclusions about it. Yeah. And so the conclusion that my wife had when, because her mom never really listened to her, mm -hmm. uh, was that she wasn't loved. So this is, this is pretty typical. And the, the great thing, Michelle, is, we, and this is the work that you do with people, is we when we learn where we see how our kid logic or our kid conclusions that we've made about what happened to us in our childhood, where we can then step into our adult selves, our healthy mm -hmm. adult selves and say like, we can really release our kid from actually having to run our lives. Right. We can now have our adult selves run our lives. And so that's the beauty of it. But if we don't know what's going on, we don't understand what's driving us. We don't understand, you know, like we, we don't have to keep asking. My wife doesn't have to keep asking the question, am I loved anymore? Mm -hmm. She is loved, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have, my primal question is, am I safe? Because mm -hmm. uh, I had abuse and trauma in my early childhood. I don't have to keep asking that question anymore. I am safe. And so kind of the prescription to the question is taking her question and turning it into a statement, which I call the primal truth, where Am I safe becomes I am safe. Ooh, am I, like I secure that. becomes I am secure. Am I loved becomes I am loved. And that's the healthy adult self that you're leading people on. It's like, we take, we take back the power. We, we step in and like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this nonsense. I'm, I'm six, four, two fifteen <laughs> right now. Okay. I'm safe. All right. I yeah. live in a suburb of San Diego. All right. Everything's fine. Okay, with foster like it's okay, yeah. gummy, okay it's not a life or death situation every day but my kid self says it is and so I really got to coach mm -hmm. myself and lead myself in a way that lives in the primal truth not the primal question 
you know, um, and I'm and I'm thinking about how you go from that flip to because mine was Am I Safe too. That was my number one was Am I Safe. So I'm thinking about how how do we then go from Am I Safe to I am safe? And I'm thinking, of course, inner child work, right? Mm -hmm. What do you recommend? Like what do people do in order to make that flip? Yes. Well, first of all, I think it, we need to have a lot of compassion for the question. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Because there's a reason why you're asking that question. And the reason why I'm asking that question or the listeners are asking their primal question is because something happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something occurred. And, um, you know, we've just been using kind of our, our kids solutions to try to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to judge ourselves. We want to recognize that, you know, Mich Michelle has an emotional need for safety. Mm -hmm. And we know this, that when Michelle has that, that sense of safety, she's her best self. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so she's got to be aware of that. She's got to know like what's, what type of things send her into her scramble. You know, what I, I use this with couples a lot. It's like fundamentally the reason why relationships don't work out is because we have somebody who's answering our primal question with a no or a maybe. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And, and, and they, and they don't have the same need that's not theirs. So they're, yeah. So they're coming, coming at it through their frame of reference and like, what do you mean you don't feel safe? Right. Totally. Yeah. I get that. Uh, absolutely. They, and so for you, like, how do we, what do we do with it? How do we occupy kind of our adult selves? Well, that means you having a conversation with your spouse about mm -hmm. how they can help you feel safe. Where two things that your spouse can do to help uh, answer your primal question with a yes and also highlight anything that they're doing that would answer your primal question with a no or a maybe. Mm, I love that. And this is where we start directing clear conversations around the actual issues, yeah. the things that are really going on inside of us. It is rarely to do with uh, the di unloading the dishwasher or <laughs> taking um, the garbage you know, out, <laughs> taking the garbage out, even though those seem to be the things that we completely argue and fight about it there's mm -hmm. something deeper and if we can start having those conversations those are those are the healthy adult conversations that we need to have right i love that that's great okay so uh, let me let me i'll give you the rest of them yeah yeah quickly. yeah number four uh, number four is am i wanted and this mm -hmm. is really the, des the desire to be pursued and included yep um typically these folks with this question had childhoods where they just felt maybe perhaps like the outsider in the family. Mm -hmm. And maybe they were the black sheep of the family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe there was a favorite child and they weren't it. Okay. And so it's just a question again, a kid like question. Am I wanted around here? Yeah. Um, That's interesting. And, this, this is my husband. This is what he came up with when uh, he took the, the quiz or this, is it a quiz? What do you call a survey, a test? I don't know. Assessment. Yeah. Little assessment. It's the assessment. assessment. Yeah. When he took it, that's what he came up with. And he did. I remember I've asked him before. I'm like, who raised you? Because, you know, he was the boy, there was a boy and then his younger sister. And it was, he didn't have any boundaries, you know, just kind of did his own thing. Mm -hmm. And he talks now about how that was kind of hard because you don't feel like you matter. He doesn't feel like he mattered growing up as much because he could do whatever he wanted to do, which is a teenager's yes. dream. But inside, he didn't feel like that. So, but even as a little kid, so it's very interesting. Very, very. That's very common. What you're saying right there is very common. That comes up a lot with uh, people with question four is that there was this laissez faire approach to parenting. Mm -hmm. It's just like, do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And that again, got interpreted by your husband as like, well, do, do you even want me around here? Like, do, I mean, I have so much freedom. Like, why aren't you pursuing me? Why aren't you leading me? Why aren't you seeking mm -hmm. relationship with me? There's sort of this total hands-off approach. And so yep. you can see how your husband could wonder, am I wanted? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Very interesting. Hmm. Question five, am I mm -hmm. successful? This tends mm -hmm. to be people who grew up in competitive families where there's scoreboards and winning and kind of that was in the water of your family of origin. Mm -hmm. um, question six is, am I good enough? Mm -hmm. This is where perhaps you grew up in a home with a lot of perfectionism, a lot of criticism, a lot of um, 
nitpicking about your mm. friends and your wardrobe and you just fundamentally feel like there's you're flawed mm. that there's something wrong with you interesting. and this question gets expressed in a very interesting way kind of two clear ways number one person with this primal question will either be uh, sort of like a, very insecure or like a fly on the wall or very um, kind of managing their image quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to be very high achievers, mm. tend to struggle with imposter syndrome because mm. they're just wondering like, am I valued? Am I good enough? Do I measure up? Mm. That's just the fundamental question driving their life. The other way that it gets expressed, and maybe this is the um, more negative way it gets <laughs> expressed, is narcissism, mm. right? This is where we then lean into a lot of self-puffery or telling people how great we are because really that's just a, a set our insecurity of not feeling good enough now coming out and being expressed in narcissism but fundamentally it's the primal question of am i good enough driving wow. all of this mm, that's really good and then finally the last question is just question seven do i have a purpose and really this is um i call it people who grow up in overly inspirational families tend to have this question where parents put this pressure on the child to like do something really great or have a great impact or you know you're you're going to change the world okay that was kind mm -hmm. of again nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. but you can see somebody going okay now i work uh as middle management at a large corporation mm -hmm. is this is my life having impact does this is this my purpose is this and so they're always struggling with that kind of angst around whether they're doing enough to save the world. Wow. These are, I love these. They're so relevant. And yeah. And I mean, I could see every human would plug into one of them. It reminds me a little bit of the Enneagram, you know, how we want to work on them. It seems like it's like our life, our life's work, right? So if I'm in yes. the Enneagram, it's not something you heal in a week or in a you know year of counseling. It's like, no. It's kind of like something you're looking at throughout your whole life, correct? Exactly. And one of the things too that I, I really focus <clears throat> on in the book, and again, I encourage your listeners to go uh, to the my website, mikefoster.tv or just primalquestion.com to take the assessment. Mm -hmm. But but one of the things that's really important to understand is we we want to, we certainly want to manage the question in our own lives. But the other side of the question is, what I call your primal gift. And it's this superpower that every question has mm -hmm. because fundamentally what we want to do is improve our relationships. We want to improve our, you know, kind of like how we show up in the world. So like every question, I'll, I'll give you an example. What happens is the research shows we will take our primal question and we will put it over every other person that we interact with. And then we work very diligently to answer that with a yes. Mm. So give you an example. And this is what makes you great at what you do, Michelle. So let's take your am I safe question. What you do is you place your am I safe question over all your friends, all your clients, all the people that you're coaching. Mm -hmm. And that creates this atmosphere where they feel they can open up. They can talk about hard things. They can be honest with you. And that's a real relational superpower that you have because you have fundamentally been studying safety your entire life. <laughs> I never thought about it like that. That's fascinating. Interesting. Yeah. So perhaps I'm creating that space, that safe space for people so they can become more vulnerable and drop into themselves. Wow. That's really cool. You know, I'll give you, give you an example with um, your husband, Am I Wanted? My guess is your husband does a really good job, including people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcoming oh, yes. people. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's but him does, taking he said his to question. Me for, but he said to me yeah. over 25 years, do you really want me? Like, like, uh -huh. that's, that's so fascinating because that, that, those are his words. Are you sure you really want me? I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Yes. Oh, are you sure? Yes. I'm like, oh my God, why do you ask me this question? Now it makes sense. I've never asked totally. that question to him. That's so funny. Not. Gosh, it's, so it, it's not the lens of how you see the world. You see right. your world through the lens of safety. He sees his, the world through the lens of belonging and inclusion and being pursued and wanted. Dang, that's so 
fascinating. Yeah. Cause my growing up was like, Ooh, there were many times I didn't feel safe. We had the uncle that would come over for me. I even had colic for the first nine months of my life. Sometimes mm -hmm. someone would come tend to me. Sometimes they let me, you know, quote unquote, cry it out. So it was really hard. I had to yes. learn how to take care of myself. It wasn't safe. There were a lot of things that weren't safe. Just when you think about, I talk a lot about the inner child. So the first six years, and you said the first five years, what goes on during those first few years, it's hard. We don't have discernment yes. to say, oh, my mom was mad at me because she had a fight with her sister. No, we take it on. It's like, it's my fault. I did something wrong. So fascinating. That's part. exactly right. Yeah. But, oh my gosh. But within that, I think it's important that people understand that that's not something, there's nothing wrong with Michelle. There's nothing wrong with uh, your husband. There's There's just something that, some programming that we have that needs to be uh, tended to and led from our healthy self, but also within it is this really powerful gift that we're meant to deploy and use. See, I don't have the gift of belonging and wantedness. Mm -hmm. Your husband does, okay? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I have the gift of safety and I need to look for ways to, uh, to give that away. You know, same, mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. Am I successful people? Trust me, you want them on your team. Okay. Yeah. Because they inherently know how to win and <laughs> they will that. win. I love that. I wanted to ask you how we apply it in. I want to ask you how you apply it in any kind of relationship, but also in business. So can we start in, um, since you're talking about business, tell us more, like you said, you do some executive coaching too. So what does that look like with employees that have one style and their bosses that have a different style? Exactly. Well, this is one of my favorite things. And I talk about this in the book to a whole chapter, just how this plays out in the workplace. But I'll give you a story. Um, I had a client I was working with. He's a CEO of a, of a large company. And he was trying to bring some feedback to his CFO. Now, his CFO has the primal question of, am I good enough? Mm. And so one of the things that he was running into when he was bringing this feedback to um, his CFO with the primal question, am I good enough, is that the defenses would go up, the walls would go up when he'd start bringing this feedback. And so what we work, worked together and really kind of did kind of with the three of us is understood that if, if the CEO wants to bring feedback, he first has to answer the CFO's primal question with a yes. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he needed to come in and say, Hey, listen, I'll just make up a name, Joe, you're doing a great job. I'm so glad you're our CFO. I really value you. Um, kind of really, really make sure we're affirming a yes to Joe's, am I good enough primal question? And then bringing the feedback because a question six uh, person is going to be very, very um, rattled by any type of uh, feedback or performance review or anything that feels critical. Whereas, you know, somebody like me, I'm not going to be rattled by that as much. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to be rattled by, if you come in and talk to me about, I'm not sure uh, the company's going to, the company's about to go out of business. I'm going to be rattled by that <laughs> because I'm going to feel like right. my whole safety is now going to be jeopardized. So like one of the things that I would say is like, if I was your employee, like Michelle, say you're my CEO, CEO and I'm on your team, uh -huh. Michelle, you do not want to call me on a Wednesday and go, Hey, Mike, um, I've got, I've got an emergency meeting on Friday. I need to talk to you. Okay. And then hang up, right. Oh, no. Or leave a yeah. voicemail. Yeah. <laughs> you want to be very, very, cause I just go like, Oh, I mean, fire worst case scenarios. Like I am going to be freaking out for two days. Okay. So what you want to do in your communications with me as a good CEO and as a good leader, you want to say, hey, because um, I want the truth. I need details. I want mm -hmm. to understand exactly what, what's happening. That's how I feel safe. Mm -hmm. um, kind of that hypervigilance part of me. So you want to go, hey, Mike, uh, we have a marketing meeting, an emergency marketing meeting. <laughs> Everything's okay. Um, and I'm also going to bring Joe and Amy. They're going to be in the meeting also. But we really need to solve this problem because I think there's a really great opportunity for our company here, right? Okay, 
that's <laughs> going to land so differently on me than you just kind of not thinking through the fact that my primal question is, am I safe? I love that. In fact, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm going to have, of course, everyone that works with me that they're going to have to take this because I like to, I want to know what they're, we have them all take the Enneagram and now that we're going to add this to it because great. every time I, I will slack one of the girls that works for me and I'll say, Hey, do you have um, any, you know, 30 minutes this, this week to jump on a call? Her response is like, am I getting fired? <laughs> No, yes. stop. Right. She does this all the time. I wonder if she also has, I am safe. I can't wait to hear. Cause she says this, she's worked with me for three years. She goes, every time you reach out, I think I'm going to get fired. I'm like, oh my goodness. No, not at all. So this is fascinating. So well, think of this, like if your husband was on your team and you're the CEO of your husband, you would make sure that you would invite him to all the company activities, right? Yes. yes. You do not want to leave him out because if you left him out or overlooked him, you know, like say you're going to go out and have drinks after dinner, after a long work day yeah. and you left him out, that would be a no to his primal question that he's not wanted. So again, when we started tuning to our, our team members, primal question, we can really become a very effective leader with them and lead them very well. I love this. It's funny. Cause I, I, I'm seeing my husband, um, cause you had said he includes everybody. He always wants to make sure everyone's mm -hmm. included. Right. So I remember him, I, I had a visual of him sitting down with our two sons saying, now, if you ever did at a dinner party, you never want to let yourself dominate a conversation. You always want to make sure everyone at the table is included. I remember him saying this to them. You want to yes. actually go and, and look at the person that's not speaking and encourage them to speak, ask them questions. It's very important that everyone at the table feels very included you guys hear me? They're like, yes, dad. I'm thinking, wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a great quality though. And he's right about it. But to have a talk with the kids about it, it was really interesting. So it's very well, interesting. It's, it's his superpower, right? His, yeah. It's his priority. Kind yeah. of another way to say this is what we need the most is what we want to give away to others. Ooh, yeah. um, and so oh, this belonging, that's a real priority for your husband because he wants that. He wants to be included. He also wants to give that away to everybody else because he's assuming that everybody else wants to uh, be included also. Now, that's where we kind of can make a mistake a little bit because perhaps there's people out there who don't want to, who don't want to be included. Okay. Right. Right. And that's okay because your husband may look at sort of like, I don't want to be included. I don't want to belong. I don't want to be a part that could send your husband into his scramble. He could take that as a no or a maybe to his own primal question. Mm -hmm. And so again, that's why we want to live in the primal truth because when we're showing up, you know, when I live with, I am safe, mm -hmm. I'm going to be giving out my primal gift in a really healthy way. Yeah. But if I'm living in my question, I may be giving out my primal gift in a, a more uh, unhealthy way. For example, if I'm just putting... Um, I don't, let's just say I'm leaving my question and I want, I'm, I'm over indexing on safety. I am now like making you feel so safe <laughs> that I'm not telling you the truth. Okay. <laughs> yes. Right. That could be, that could be my tendency. Your husband could be like, I, I need everybody to feel included. I need everybody that's over indexing. Right. And so yeah. we got to be aware of like the healthy deployment of that primal gift. Mm. Tell, tell us about how this applies to personal relationships. And again, it could be someone you're in partnership with, but it could even be like, you know, siblings or friends or anything like that. Tell us about that a little bit. How does that show up? Yeah. Well, you know, fundamentally, like the, the tool is about improving all relationships because it, once we can start interacting with each other around um, kind of the core driver of our life and understand that. I think so often, you know, I write about this in the book, I kind of say like, in our relationships, if if our relationships were a tree, we tend to live in the branches of that tree, and we do a lot of pruning, and the tree, the branches, it's busy, they're kind of all, in, they can be all entangled, and it can get very confusing, and create a lot of problems for relationships. But the more that we can live in the trunk, and the roots of something, relationships just get a lot simpler 
Mm. Like I don't have to like figure out all the branches of what's going on with my wife. I just need to understand her primal question mm -hmm. and what I might be doing to answer that with a no or a maybe again, unintentionally. And I think most of us in relationship with each other unintentionally answer the primal question with a no or a maybe. So if we can begin to use this, it's language. That's all this mm -hmm. is. It's just a language or a, a model that says, okay, if I approach Michelle now, knowing that safety is a really important part of her life, I can make certain choices. I can make certain uh, decisions. I could um, make sure I'm really clear with you in communication. If I see you being triggered, I'm like, okay, I know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. She's not feeling safe. Yep. Yep. So I, do you, do you think that these primal needs are at the core of just how we operate every single day? Absolutely. It's at the root. It's at the root. So if I'm feeling triggered, is it because I'm not feeling safe on some level and some part of me is getting triggered around safety? I, I believe that the, this, the question is so dominant and so ingrained and in every aspect of our lives that yes, almost everything is attached to it. Wow. I have a question. Do you, um, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. My brain's like, Oh, wait, I want to ask you this and this and this, but when it comes to that, are you also seeing things like most people that have, let's say depression or anxiety or codependency, like are, are they plugged into a certain primal need here? Like, or question? Yes. Yeah, so, so here's what I'd say is, uh, and again, there are exceptions to every rule here. And I yeah. don't want to be like too general generalist about it because uh, depression, anxiety, there, there's a lot going on there. But I do think if, if, if we're a coach or a therapist, or even trying to lead ourselves better, the anxiety or the depression is the branches Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the branches of the tree. What mm -hmm. we need to understand is perhaps the anxiety that I'm feeling is attached to the, am I safe question mm -hmm. or the, am I secure question, or perhaps mm -hmm. my anxiety is attached to how people perceive me and my value question six, am I good enough? Mm-hmm. Mm. Ultimately, like I, I always say, like, I think about it like layers, like under every behavior, is an emotion or feeling driving that behavior. Yep. But under every emotion and feeling is an unmet need driving that emotion or feeling. Okay. Mm. And so what we want to do is focus on the unmet need. And that's really like, is the unmet need safety? Is the unmet need security? Is the unmet need love? And, and really to, like looking to the primal question to say, okay, what's not being met right now that is driving the emotional reaction or the emotional mm -hmm. flooding, yeah. which is then the behavior that I'm seeing. And so again, I would say anxiety, depression, those are the, the emotions and feelings, mm -hmm. but there's something underneath that driving mm -hmm. that narrative or that, that, that reaction. But you're not finding that like the people that have, let's say, am I wanted or do I have a purpose? Let's say, are those, those people mm -hmm. don't have, let's say more anxiety than someone that has, am I safe? You're not finding that in your studies. Well, what I, what I would say is, um, let's take a house, for example, mm -hmm. there's a home. I live in a home, a white house here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. The way I look at this house is, uh, it's a place of safety and protection. Mm -hmm. The way question two, am I secure? People would look at this house this is a, this is a way for them. This is a financial investment. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that a question three would look at it would be, this is a place where, where people can feel loved and, and we can host things. Uh, your, your husband would look at a house as a place of convening people and welcoming the neighbors in, mm -hmm. uh, the question five, am I successful would look at the house as, um, this is a way to show that I've made it and I'm successful. Mm, okay. I got it. Question six would look at it as this is a place where I don't know that I, I feel like I'm, I've, I matter because I, I, I'm actually a homeowner now. Mm -hmm. And maybe question seven people would go, 
this is the place where we're gonna launch our children into making an impact in the world. Now it's still a house, right? Yeah. It's, it's still the <laughs> same white house, but how you see that and how you interact with it and how you work with it is dependent on your primal question. And so we may have anxiety and I would say, yes, for sure, anxiety would be attached to question one, am I safe? But there could be a social anxiety around a question four, am I wanted? Mm. And so there could be anxiety around the fact that you're not leading a meaningful, uh, you know, impactful life. It, it, so it can play out across all seven questions. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, and this is why I love the tool, because it's simple but it actually has a lot of implications in somebody's lives. Like once I know my question, a lot of, a lot of things begin to make a lot more sense. Right. Right. That's so good. I love this. Um, is, is it hard? I want to ask you of all of these, as I look at this list of seven, um, is there one that's like, harder to find the gift of them? Or like, is there one where people just get stuck over and over again? Or does that make sense? Like in terms of the primal gift of, yeah, the of primal using... gift, you know, so like for your wife, you know, am I loved? Is that one of the hardest ones to flip and find the primal gift or are they all kind of the same? And it depends on your personality. They're, they're all, <sighs> Well, it's all difficult because it, it requires self-awareness, right? And it, it requires us to leave patterns of our kid logic and our kid solutions and kind of step into our adult, adult selves. Mm -hmm. But not, not any one question is more difficult than the other. I would say um, how, the, how strong of an imprint that question is mm -hmm. does matter. Yeah. I think that, that brings some implications. Like I a question being imprinted by trauma is just going to carry a lot more weight to it than a question just imprinted through confusion, perhaps. Mm. Yeah. I think about the depth of the wound. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot it's of a sense. a good way to say it. The depth of the wound matters. Yeah. So you talk about um, using this with, you know, coaching or, or even in therapy how how do you do that? Do you just take the test and say, here you go, therapist or coach of mine, help me out now, now yeah. you have my primal wound? <laughs> well, so, you know, there's two ways to do it. For sure, I'd encourage people to go to my website, mikefoster.tv, mm -hmm. do the mm -hmm. assessment, it's mm -hmm. about 30 questions, and you can, you can have, you know, a client do that and they can bring the results. But if I was just facilitating this as a coach mm -hmm. or a therapist, there'd be a couple areas that I would, um, uh, uh, look at. So the first question I'd ask somebody in terms of assessing their primal question is talk to me about your triggers. Talk to me about the things that emotionally activate you, that mm -hmm. emotionally flood you. Mm -hmm. Because what, what, and they start, when they start talking about that, basically what they're talking about is my primal question being answered with a no. Okay. Mm. So I yeah. want to understand what's going on. What are the things that are happening? Is it a safety issue? Is it a uh, purpose issue? Is it a love issue? Um, that's what, it, so I wanted them to talk about their triggers. Then I want to have them talk about what's the, what's your message to the world? What is the one thing that you would want me to know? Mm -hmm. Well, typically what we want people to know is the thing that we want to hear. Okay. Right. <laughs> so like what I want to hear is that everything's going to be okay. Okay. Yeah. Because my primal question is, am I safe? Uh, somebody who has question seven, do I have a purpose? They're gonna, they're gonna want. To, I promise you, the purpose people are gonna be talking to people. They're gonna want people, strangers, their kids, everyone they meet, to know that they have a purpose. Yep. That they yep. are gonna make an impact in the world. Okay, because that's what they talk about. I always say, like, sports people talk about sports, car people talk about cars. Mm -hmm. Primal questions talk about primal questions. Like yeah. it is what you will communicate about. It will be your priorities, your language. So what is your message to the world? Mm -hmm. And then the third thing I would look at is just the family of origin. Talk to me about some of the things that were happening in your family that you felt, that you experienced, that you, <laughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. made some conclusions about. Mm. And that helps us understand. And when people get talking, all you're doing as a coach 
is collecting the themes and the data and say, it feels like it might be, am I loved? It feels like it might be, mm. am I safe? Mm. So good. I'm wondering if we are in a relationship with someone again, like my mom, my sister, my whomever friend. And I know that I, my primal uh, wounding is all around feeling safe. Do I let them know that? Like, I think it'd be really cool to like educate people around us. Like, yeah. So one of my primal questions is, am I safe? Um, so I want you to know that as I interact with you, that's one of my things. So it might look like this or this or this. So I, it would be help me to feel reassured that I'm safe. Like, would you, do you, would you recommend that? I'm just thinking of like how I would apply this in my relationships now, knowing that that's one of my primal questions. Well, I, lo I love where you went there because that's exactly what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We want to take this information, this insight that we have about ourselves yeah. and share it with the people who are important to us, who are yeah. doing life with us. I think that, again, it's an opportunity to dance better together. It's a, a way to interact in a more uh, powerful and efficient way. That, you know, again, it is vulnerable to say like, hey, I have a need mm -hmm. for safety and it's, yeah. I have a, a question that's a, it's certainly, so we're not just broadcasting this to anybody, not, it's not everybody's business to know what our primal question is because it's an important part. I do think it's a sacred part of who we are, mm -hmm. but for sure, like family members, safe friends, mm -hmm. uh, coworkers, people that we're doing things with it's it helps them understand you better mm. and if they care about you which they do and they want a better relationship with you mm -hmm. they're going to attune to the awareness of your need for safety mm, i love that i just see this as such an empowering tool that can help any relationship really because even if let's say if i'm working in a corporation or any business let's say my boss does not need to know unless I have a great relationship with them. Um, my boss doesn't need to know what my primal question is, but I do. And I need to be mm -hmm. really aware of how my question is showing up in, in my life in general. So just having that information for myself, I find would like, it could, could be life-changing in a way. So. Yeah. It gives you a new, new, uh, understanding of yourself and how to lead yourself yeah. in the, in the best health. Like, I want to be on to me. I want to know like, oh yeah, there I go again. Exactly. Going into my scramble, doing all the hypervigilance, doing all this super high <laughs> control stuff. Yeah. Like that stuff ruins my life. That doesn't make, that leads to exhaustion and, and it's not how I want to show up. So if I can be on to me, like I understand the hidden programming inside of me, this mm -hmm. question that is influencing so much of my day and my relationships, if I can understand that, that gives me a lot of uh, empowerment to, mm. uh, conduct myself in, in the best way possible. Mm. So good. Thank you. This was fantastic. Thank you for writing this book. And I, I can, I know it's going to help a lot of people just reading what I've read has helped me already so much in just the last few days. Great. So thank you. Where would people find you? Yeah. So again, I mentioned the, uh, my website, mikefoster.tv. That's TV as in television. Uh, you can also go to primalquestion.com and the assessments there, the book is there. The book is also on Amazon. Um, and I'm also on Instagram at mikefoster2000. I, I use Instagram quite a bit. And so those are, those are probably the best uh, platforms and places to, to find me at. But I do encourage all your listeners, like start, just take action at the, take you five minutes to take the assessment at the website mm -hmm. and I will get the journey started for you uh, in understanding yourself better and then also understanding your relationships better. Yeah, I, I can attest to that. It only takes maybe five, seven minutes at the most. And I took it, I was in bed one night and I was taking it <laughs> and my husband was laughing. I was reading the questions out loud. He was answering every single one. I go, why don't you just take it for me? If you know me so well, He's like, <laughs> we, had, we had a good laugh, but yeah, it was really, really accurate based on the findings. So thank you so much Great. for your work. Um, this was wonderful. We really appreciate you being on today. Thanks, Michelle. It's been awesome talking to you. Thank you. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed that show as much as I did. And I got to tell you again, taking 
his questionnaire, it literally just took like a, f- a few minutes, like no more than five, I think. Like it was so, so quick and boom, there's the primal question. And everyone that did this questionnaire came back to me and said, oh my God, this is fascinating. Like, this is so true. So it will change the way that you relate to others in the world when you know this about yourself. So do head over and do that with him. And also do not forget, I have created for you guys five healthy relationship myth. It's the PDF that will help you to understand what a healthy relationship is is and is not, and tips to help you to improve your relationship. That's over at theadultchair.com forward slash myths, M-Y-T-H-S, theadultchair.com forward slash myths. Okay, that's it. That's all I've got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. I will see you next week seated right here in the adult chair. <laughs>